A, we're doing the argument for Mary Sidney as the true author of Shakespeare. Mary Sidney. Mary Sidney. Now, first of all, uh, she had the connections. Uh, her mother nursed Queen Elizabeth. She worked with Queen Elizabeth. She was highly educated. She had studies in Latin, French, Italian, pretty much anything that Shakespeare's plays you Her know, own talk personal about. instructor about all those languages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, people uh, would re- describe her as witty, but kind and flirtatious. She had a lot of different aspects of her, none that were too you know, harsh or, or violent as some of the other proposed authors of Shakespeare. Now, um, she was a poet herself, and she actually was really passionate about writing in English, even when Latin was more popular at the time. She liked to translate a lot of, a lot of other people's works and uh, she wrote closet dramas. Uh, obviously, she couldn't write uh, plays because she was a woman and that you know, wasn't allowed, which is why you know, it's possible that she is the true author of Shakespeare. Now, um, if you look at Shakespeare's works themselves, they have a lot of instances of you know, strong female characters and, and situations where women disguise themselves as men. And if she was the true author of Shakespeare, this would be something very prevalent in her life. Or something that she would, you know, be interested in writing about. Right. She would get a lot of inspiration from it. And personal experience. Absolutely. Uh, her brother was also a poet, and uh, he wrote sonnets before Shakespeare did. And um, she was no- well known through all literary circles because of her mm-hmm. brother's connections she started, and her family's. She right. started a literary circle as right. well. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as far as the sonnets go. It's interesting because when her husband died, it was believed that she had an affair with a younger youth, which would be the younger youth described in Shakespeare, in the first you know half, I guess if you want to call it that, of Shakespeare's sonnets. But then if you look at the second half, where they believe that you know there's this dark-haired woman who's you know interfering dark-haired, with dark-skinned her. woman, mm-hmm. okay. uh, she at one point believed that her niece was uh, having an affair with this young youth that she was uh, involved with, so who also had dark hair. So it would tie in perfectly with all the sonnets. Now, what's interesting is that her lifespan uh, fits perfectly with Shakespeare. She was right. born three years before Shakespeare and died five years after. The first folio was published two years after her death and dedicated to her two sons. Um, Just two, not four. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of her sons, uh, William Herbert, uh, his initials are WH, who, the, if you remember, are, the sonnets are dedicated to, but no one could figure out who it was. Now, if she already was dedicating, you know, the, the, the folio to her sons after her death, it would make sense that, you know, if she really cared about that much about her sons, that she might also dedicate other pieces of work to them. Now, um, let's see. What's interesting is Ben Johnson, uh, he wrote both the eulogy for Shakespeare and uh, Mary Sidney. Uh, in his eulogy to Shakespeare, he says, While I confess thy writings to be such, as neither man nor muse can praise too much, tis true in all men's suffrage, but these ways were not the paths I meant unto thy praise. Basically saying, like, this wasn't the way I meant to to appreciate you, you know, like, it, it, almost like there's almost a falseness to, to this uh, dedication, you know, like, I admire what you've done, but this isn't the way I wanted to admire it. Now, of course, you could say, well, that just has to do with the death, but the way it's worded, and then also the mention to the sweet swan of Avon. Which is her crest. Mm-hmm. The swan is her personal, or her family crest. Later in the mm-hmm. eulogy, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's it's definitely, you know, a, a likelihood that this eulogy could have been indirectly dedicated to her. Now, uh, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, he also wrote the eulogy for Mary Sidney, who died, you know, five years after Shakespeare. Now, as far as arguments against uh, who wrote Shakespeare, the biggest one is Christopher Marlowe. They were right. born the same year. They had similar writing styles. Um, they He certainly had the talent to write Shakespeare. And it could be argued he had similar motive um, compared to some other playwrights, including De Vere and Bacon. He had more probable motive to write Shakespeare's works. At the time, he was being tried for atheism. And uh, the witnesses of the bar stabbing he was involved in were mostly government agents. So that proposed... And known liars. They were well-known con men that Mm -hmm. were really good at lying. (laughs) So obviously, uh, if you assume that he wrote Shakespeare, you have to assume that he faked his death because he died way before most of Shakespeare's greatest works were written. Right. So if you assume that, you know, it was uh, even a government assassination, that still assumes that he died and, you know, couldn't have written Shakespeare. And if he did fake his death, 
you have to keep in mind that faking your death is something where you don't stick around and, and keep, you know, writing plays. You get the hell out of there. If you, if you fake your death, you know, now now you're on a charge that's even, you know, bigger than death itself, right. you know, when you get tried. And so you wouldn't have stuck around and kept trying your luck, continuously producing work. Especially when you're such a prominent, well-known man that you were an intelligence agent for the queen and were in circles with other literary men and... You know, how, why would you say in a, in a location where you're so well known where you can risk being put to death mm -hmm. or even tortured or wor whatever is worse? Not to mention Christopher Marlowe didn't really write any comedies and, you know, comedies are pretty much one of Shakespeare's biggest uh, specialties. And so for him to suddenly, you know, be fantastic at comedies after, after faking his death while, you know, living this very hectic and, and scary life essentially after, you know, faking a death... It just it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for him to continue doing this, especially putting it under someone else's name. I don't feel like he had the the. I feel like his ego would have been too much. He he was he was a tempered man. He got into bar fights before. I mean, the last one that supposedly was his death. I mean, that says a lot for someone the way he died. Or yeah, I mean, first of all, you died. have to assume that this was all some conspiracy to begin with. You know mm -hmm. that that he would have gone through all these lengths when he was known to get into bar fights anyway. So him dying in one doesn't really come as much of a shock right so it just there's you have to make so many assumptions uh to to make christopher marlowe the author that you don't need to make at all with with mary sydney right and including now going on to there are other playwrights as well including devere and bacon that were proposed that were actually the authors of shakespeare's works so i'll start with devere devere died in 1604 when many of shakespeare's plays had not even yet appeared since you know they were influenced by really popular and well-known events like the tempest was inspired by one of the famous shipwrecks in 1609 and Macbeth was inspired by the gunpowder plot which was an event that Oxford didn't even live to see it in his time so why would Oxford or Devere Oxford write plays his best works for even a, a rival troop the Lord Chamberlain's men why would he do that when you know he was a man of vanity he why would he hide his identity he had no motive unlike you know Mary Sidney who was a woman in a time where she wasn't allowed to put out her works you know because in a society where she was shamed and it's widely believed that women shouldn't even be writing anyway I mean why would he be happy to give his unremembered plays and poems to the world and then retreat to anonymity for future genius writing plays of Shakespeare works not to mention you know she her sons were patrons at one point for the Lord Chamberlain's men so there's right. there's no there's no contradiction with her you know being in support of a rival group if right. she was going to produce plays for a group it would have been the ones that her sons were backing right you know it makes perfect sense in that regard and one of the biggest arguments to support that Devere was actually a playwright was that Shakespeare lacked worldliness and polish to write plays. So therefore, he must have come from someone with a broader learning spectrum and a greater, um, with greater experience in the world, and by and an aristocrat by all that um, likelihood. And that's Looney's definition. One of the biggest people to support the Devere theory, and by that definition, Mary Sidney fills in that spot as well she would have had she, all the knowledge and she and was a countess spectrum. right yeah. and so she by that definition alone she could be the author of shakespeare's works yeah. not only that was that you know shakespeare's voice in his work was known as you know being full of compassion and empathy and generosity of spirit well devere was known in his lifetime as being the very complete opposite of that he was arrogant he was spoiled petulant he was widely disliked by everyone and given to outbursts of violence which you know like Marlowe speaks very differently to the works that Shakespeare is known for and then once again he would have had to fake his death and have put aside his ego enough to put all these wonderful works under another person's name it just once again doesn't make sense right now moving on to Francis Bacon he was one of the other more famous playwrights to be proposed that he wrote Shakespeare's works. Now, the way that this theory originally started, which we really should look into and is an important factor in how this theory became how it's known today, is that an American named Delia, Delia Bacon, um, no relation really whatsoever except just a coincidence, and had she had a passionate, obsessive attachment to a theological student uh, some years her junior, and she was madly in love with him when she... It, 
ended in complete humiliation for her when she found out that the young man was in a habit of amusing his friends by reading her tender-hearted letters. And it was something that she absolutely never recovered from, which we'll get into later. It was the starting of a di- downward spiral that led into her obsession of proposing that Bacon was the actual authors of Shakespeare works. So, because of her obsession, she traveled to England and she won the assistance of a number of influential people that, you know, she... Uh, they got her to help. She stayed there for 10 months and she had all the resources to go to libraries and archives um, and meet many influential people. But the way she decided to support her theory was through intellectual osmosis. She thought that by going to where Bacon was a lot, you know, by going in trees or, you know, any of the nature areas that he was prominently around, that she would absorb his intellectual osmosis and thus prove that, you know, Bacon was the real yeah. playwright she of was Shakespeare works. absorbing something when she was making <laughs> Right. So then after that she um, intellectual osmosis for 10 months, she wrote a book about it all um, proving that, you know, Bacon was the author of Shakespeare works except for the fact that in the 675 pages that she wrote, she never mentioned once directly that he was the author. You just had to figure out that through intellectual osmosis yourself. Um, you, Many, many scholars of the day, if not all of them, completely denounced this book, said it was very odd in its writing. It was vast. It was completely unreadable. And thus, after the complete, complete desolate experience of that, she returned home and she died in institutional institutionalized, believing she was the Holy Spirit. And it was after this that it, this theory was later then picked up by Mark Twain and Henry James, and they started to support it. And through multiple like uh, Ouija board fashions, like they believed in through prime numbers and through m- hidden messages within the works that supported that Bacon. Um, was the author of his works. But then using the same algorithms, you can find messages saying saying that it was Shakespeare, or you could probably find even more crazy things if you look hard enough. You you have to make, once again, so many crazy assumptions. But when it comes down to it, the only person who had the intelligence, the worldview, the right timing... And the connections. And the connections. And the motivation, most of all. Right. To Without having to assume any kind of fake deaths or, you know, predispositions, she was the one who made the perfect sense to and not to mention she would have had the backing from queen elizabeth to to go through with something like this I mean, and she had the connections and unlike bacon and unlike bacon who was known as someone that just completely attacked theater and said it was frivolous it was a lightweight pastime that you know was completely devoid of interest and he said it in his own essays so why would someone who with shakespeare's caliber of work that is completely influenced and changed the the life of theater to this day why would someone like him be known as the true writer of Shakespeare when he completely denounced theater when Mary Sidney who has the motive the connection and and the passion for and not the only mission, the English language but right. just for you know writing in general her own personal mission was to change the English and playwriting world I mean, who, through who, her works who are you gonna believe two dead guys and a guy who hates theater or someone who had that kind of pull I don't know Mary Sydney. Mary Sydney. Mary Sydney.